Hey everyone, have you ever thought of listing your own NFT collections on OpenSeas? If your answer is yes, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to store your NFT metadata in IPFS network using Pinata and then list your NFT smart contract to OpenSeas. We will first upload our metadata using the Pinata node SDK. Once we have created all our metadata, we are going to create a simple ERC721 smart contract that will mean our NFTs collections. So let's get started. If you are new here, I'm Alex, and on Eat the Blog, we help you to transition into Web3. This video is sponsored by Masterworks. Masterworks has emerged as the only platform taking billionaire art collector heads on and lets you access their exclusive investment. Simply put, you can now invest in the very same art they do by names like Banksy, Monet, Basquad, and other iconic artists just for a fraction of what they pay to purchase. If you are interested to collect artwork created by world-renowned artists, you can easily create your Masterwork account at masterwork.io. Now, let's get back to the tutorial. First of all, let us create our project folder and open it with VS Code. We are going to set up a node program that will help us upload our metadata to the IPFS network. So let us again create another folder and name it Pinata. Inside our terminal, we will first CD into our Pinata folder that we have just created, and then we can type npm in it and just keep pressing enter. Once the environment setup is done, we can start install our dependency. We will need to install Pinata node SDK and .env package. Now, in order for us to use the Pinata SDK, we will need to have the Pinata API key as well as the Pinata API secrets. So let us navigate to the Pinata official website to get the API key and secrets. If you have not registered a Pinata account, you can easily create one for free. Once you have registered an account, just click on your profile picture at the top right corner, then click API key. Click the new key button and you will see a create new API key form pop out right away. Activate the admin access, then enter your key name and then press create key. Now that we have both our API key and API secrets, we will need to store this information inside a .env file since they are sensitive information that you do not want others to get a hold of. Copy both the API key and API secret and paste it inside our .env file. Once that is done, we can start focusing on creating the node program that will help us upload our NFT metadata to the IPFS network. We can start by creating a new file and name it index.js. Pinata have a detailed documentation on their website which show us how to use their node SDK. As you can see from their documentation, we first have to import the Pinata node SDK inside our index.js file. Once we have imported the Pinata SDK, we can access the Pinata SDK functions with the Pinata API key and Pinata API secrets that we have. In order for the index.js file to access the variables inside of our .env file that we have created earlier, we have to import our .env package inside of our index.js file as well. We can easily do so by typing require.env.config. Then we will be able to access our API key by typing process.env, followed by the variable name we use to store our API key, which in our case is called pinata underscore API underscore key. And similarly, process.env.pinata underscore API underscore secret. In order to test if everything is working properly, we can use the test authentication function. And because the function returned us a promise, we can use .then to console log the result that we get. And if by any means, if the functions fail, we can return an error by using the catch error functions. Now inside of our terminal, we can run our node program by typing node followed by index.js. If you see the authenticated true message being logged inside of our terminal, it means that we have successfully set up our Pinata node SDK. Since we no longer need the test authentication functions, we can remove it from our index.js file. Now, the first thing we want our node program to do is to upload our NFT image to the IPFS network. We can do so by using the pin file to IPFS function. So let us look at the Pinata documentation to see how we can use this function. We can see that we first have to import the file system package. The file system package allows our node program to open the image file as a readable stream. The options variables is used to set our Pinata metadata. This is optional and you do not need to include them inside your code. Next, we can just call the pin file to IPFS functions, which will take both the readable stream for file and options variable as input. Now, 
Let us copy the whole example code and paste them inside of our index.js file. We can rearrange the code to make it more readable. Then the next thing to do is to create an image folder to store all our NFT images inside. Once that is done, we can now change the path to dot slash images slash the name of the image file we want to use, which in this case is one dot JPEG. And for the name of our Pinata metadata, I'm just going to simply say my NFT collection. And when we run node index.js again, it is going to return us an object that has our IPFS hash or also known as CID, which stands for content identifier. The CID hash can be used to reference the image file store in the IPFS network. Hence, let us remove the console.log code and type return https colon double slash gateway.pinata.cloud slash IPFS slash followed by the CID that reference our image file. And because this function is returning us a promise, we will need to create an async function. But before that, let us create a constant variable named pin file to IPFS equals to an arrow function. Then let us move all this code inside of the arrow function we have just created. We can name our function as get metadata equal to an async arrow function. Then inside our get metadata functions, we are going to store the URL that we get from our pin file to IPFS function inside a constant variable named image URL. We can then console.log image URL and invoke our get metadata function. Inside our terminal, Let's run node index.js and we should see our image URL being logged in our console. If we click on the URL, you can see that we are able to access our image in the browser. The next thing we want to do is to store the image URL inside a JSON file, which we are going to upload to the IPFS network as well. So let's open up the Pinata documentation again to look at how we can upload JSON file to the IPFS network. First, we have to create an object that will be stored inside a variable named body. Similarly, we create an option variable that store our Pinata metadata information. And finally, we call the pin JSON to IPFS function with our body and option variable as input. As usual, let us copy and paste this code inside of our index.js file. We can remove the options variable since we have already set our Pinata metadata previously. Now, we can set the JSON information that we would like to store in our NFT. We can give it a name and a description, followed by the image, which is going to reference the image URL returned by the pin file to IPFS function. Let's move our body variable inside the get metadata function. Similar to what we have did previously, let's create an arrow function called pin JSON to IPFS and move all this code inside the function. This function will return us a URL that contain the CID, which reference the JSON file that we are going to upload to the IPFS network. We can store the URL returned by the function inside a constant variable named metadata. Now, let us console log the metadata to see what we get. Type node index.js in our terminal and we should get the URL that reference our NFT metadata. I'm going to paste the JSON URL as a comment inside the index.js file because we will need to use it later to create our NFT token. And with that, we are done with our node program. We can now start working on our NFT smart contract. Let us create a new folder inside of our project folder and name it as smart contracts. Then CD into the smart contract folder and initialize a Node.js package manager. We are going to install several dependencies like hardhat, hardhat waffle, ethereum waffle, chai, hardhat eaters, and eaters. Once the installation is done, we can type mpx hardhat to create a basic hardhat project. If you're not familiar with hardhat, hardhat is a framework which allows you to deploy and run tests on your smart contracts. If you want to learn hardhat, we have a full video for that. I highly recommend you to check them out. Before I forget, we would also need to install the open Zeppelin and .env packages inside of our projects. Once that is done, we can start writing our smart contract inside the contract folder. Let's rename the Gritter contract to collection. We are going to delete everything inside the smart contract except for the pragma. Then we are going to import the open Zeppelin ERC721 URI storage smart contract. We name our smart contract collections that inherits the properties ERC721 URI storage. We need to have the constructor which we will use it to set the name and symbol of our ERC721 token contract. Once that is done, we can start creating our min function that will min our NFT token. We are going to call the underscore min function inherited from the ERC721 smart contract and this function takes in an address and token ID as input. 
Since we are minting this only for ourselves, we are going to type message.sender as the address input and token ID as the ID input. We have to create our token ID variable and set it as zero. Next, we are going to use the set token URI function that is also provided by the ERC721 smart contract. And this function takes in a token ID and a string as input. This string is where we will use to store our metadata URL that we have generated earlier from our node program. Hence, we are going to create an input for our min function that will take an input string named URI. Lastly, we will increase our token ID by one. And at the moment, these functions can be called by anyone, but this is not something that we want. We can add restriction by first importing the ownable contract from the Open Zeppelin library. Once that is done, we can add the only owner modifier to our function. And with that, only the address that own this contract can mean the NFT token. Now, let's head to our terminal and type mpx hardhat compile. If you receive a successful message, that means our smart contract is now ready for deployment. Since I'm not going to cover testing in this tutorial, hence we can remove all this code inside of the test file. If this is something that you want us to teach in the future, feel free to let us know in the comment down below. Next, open up the scripts folder and change the name to deploy.js. We are going to make some changes to our file. Remove all the comments and then change Gritter to collections to reference our smart contract name. Remove the hello hardhead input since it is no longer relevant. Now we can start configuring our hardhead by setting the network and the wallet address. Let us open up our hardhead.config file and remove all these codes. Next, we are going to create a .ene file here as well. We are going to use our Alchemy API to deploy our smart contract to a live network. Since this is a tutorial, I'm going to deploy our smart contract to the Rinkb testnet. Don't worry, if you are planning to deploy your smart contract to the main net, the process are the same. So let's open up Alchemy website and once you have registered an account, you will be greeted with this page. Click create app and key in the name, description and select the network that you want to deploy to. I'm going to choose the Rinkb testnet and click create app. Once that is done, press view key and copy the HTTP URL. Paste the URL information inside of our environment file and set it to a variable named Rinkb underscore API. Next, we will need to get the private key that is linked to the wallet address that we want to use to deploy our NFT smart contract. If you have a MetaMask, you can click Accounts Details and export your private key there. Once we get the private key, paste it inside our environment file. Now, let's go back to our hardhead.config file and type Networks. Inside of our Networks, key in Rinkaby and inside of the Rinkaby, it will have a URL and account. Similarly, we are going to set the URL as the Rinkaby API URL we got earlier and the account as our wallet private key. Don't forget to import the .env package inside of the file. Once that is done, we can run the deploy scripts and you should get your contract address here in your terminal. I'm going to copy the address and paste it here. If you get an error regarding insufficient fund, it's because you need to have ethers to deploy your contract. You can get dummy eaters from any Rinkerby faucet. Here are a few that I have used recently. Now that we have deployed our smart contract, we should be able to view our contract details in Etherscan. If we click on contracts, we can only see our contracts in byte codes. We can easily verify our codes by using the Etherscan API. Click the profile name on the top right and choose API key. On the left bar, click API key. Type in the name and click create new API key. Once that is done, Copy the API key token and paste it inside our environment file. Then go back to our hardhat.config file and key in etherscan, which have an API key that reference the etherscan API token that we just got earlier. Then install the hardhat etherscan package and import them into our hardhat.config file. Once that is done, we can type mpx hardhat verify dash dash network rinkaby followed by the contract address that we would like to verify. Now. Let us open up our Etherscan and we should be able to start interacting with our smart contract functions. Click on Write Contract tab and connect our MetaMask wallet. Now we can start minting our NFT token here. Go back to where we store our metadata URL. I'm going to copy it and paste it as the input for the mint function. Press Confirm. And once the transaction is done, we have successfully minted our first NFT token. If we open the Read Contract tab, and key in zero as the token ID input, we should be able to get the metadata URL. 
Now we are ready to list our NFT smart contract to OpenSeas. Let's open up the get listed on OpenSeas page. And since my smart contract is deployed to the Rinkerby testnet, I'm going to select live on testnet options. Select Rinkerby and paste the smart contract address here. Once we click submit, we should be able to see our NFT smart contract being listed in OpenSeas. If I were to create another Pinada URL metadata and use it as the URI for our second NFT token, you can see that it will automatically update in our NFT collection listed in the OpenSeas website. And that is how we create an NFT collection and list them on OpenSeas. I hope you guys find this tutorial useful. And if you would like to learn more about NFTs, you can check out these NFT tutorials here. And with that, I will see you again next time. Bye.